all packed up to go. This will be my next big adventure on this Mystere 5.5, 18 foot catamaran. This should be a four or five day adventure, leaving Fort Myers Beach and sailing by first day to Naples, then uh, 10,000 Islands, Everglades, and down to the Florida Keys. We'll be kind of hugging the coastline and camping just off the beaches, that's the plan. And we means me and you. I am of course single-handed, but you're coming along for the ride. And we have no motor, except for only propulsion is our sails. And I got a little paddle in the back there. So let's spin this thing around. how I steer it and I'm gonna be hand steering the entire way. It's about 100 and 120 miles. Between zero to four knots of wind. I'll pick up about six knots later, but this little boat doesn't take much wind for this thing to go, so that's good conditions. Um, I kind of want to work out my gear setup and light winds, that's good. And then I'll t as I figure it out, I'll get everything more secured in case we have stronger winds for some of the uh, longer stretches down the road. But I think we're actually going to have to go backwards from the beginning because I believe the big Carlos Bridge is not opening right now because of hurricane damage. So we'll go to the Matanza Bridge, uh, which is big enough for our 30 foot mast. And sailing past a car in the water here. Lots of cars. Might be able to scavenge some interesting junk along the way. Kicked up one of the rudders on a piece of driftwood now. I've got a spare rudder up there because I've lost two rudders on Hobie Cat Adventures in the past. So in case it leaves a third, I'm ready. And I rigged up a little forward trampoline there. Uh, ultimately, it'd be nice to put some of the gear on the trampoline so I could have uh, the forward trampoline so I could use the big trampoline for. Uh, maneuvering easier, but I want to kind of test that out slowly. Boat recovery barge. So I got a cooler full of seltzers for water for That guy's jib didn't do too well. You gotta take your jibs off before the hurricane. Pass under the Matanza bridge and that should be the last bridge we have to do until we get to the Keys. So now we're about to round the tip of uh, Fort Myers Beach, Estero Island, and then we'll hook back and start sailing south towards Naples. We're moving pretty quick. Wind's up to six, maybe even seven knots, and we're doing about five knots of boat speed. Maybe even six sometimes. This, this boat goes almost the same speed as the wind. It's really cool. Looks a little bit like rain up ahead. Just throw everything in the bin, I guess, if it rains. Uh, if we get the squall line, though, I might drop the sails. This thing really doesn't have a way to depower easily. Looks like the thunderstorms are starting to catch up with us. I'm gonna see if I can outrun them though.
So I just decided to beach the, the boat real quick just to be safe. It's a pretty dark cloud and it said there was some lightning. Uh, we'll just wait for this to pass and then we'll be on our way. Back on the move and taking advantage of the wind. It's been about seven or eight knots now. Really cruising. Keep getting whipped in the face with this trapeze line here though. I need to adjust that. Super annoying. Oops, getting a little bit of spray through the trampoline. The wind whipped up a bit of a chop. But at least we got enough boat speed to kind of uh, cut through it. Eight to ten knots. Really blistering speed. We're heading towards Naples up there. Much faster than I expected to be going today. But we can't really complain. Seems to be in pretty in control. I got the main sheet let way out just to kind of try to depower myself a bit because it's a little frightening. If I dip this thing, got all my stuff on the boat. I really want to do some more. Uh, Sailing with the second person with the trapeze and stuff, it's even good on one haul. It really wants to come up on one haul right now. Little uh, chips and salsa. I'm trying to dry out the cushions now, so maybe I'll be have someplace dry to sleep tonight. Yeah, they're getting there. I'm not sure if they'll dry or not. So conditions have picked up, winds have gotten uh, rather strong. Uh, maybe 15 to 18 knots. I guess that's not that strong, but for this boat, it's really strong. I got, I chickened out, I dropped the mainsail, and we're just, we're just uh, barreling downwind with just the jib. So that's working out pretty good. Yeah, we're doing six knots with just this uh, tiny little, little jib. So I think that was the right call. Uh, we were just getting way overpowered and I, I, I couldn't jibe uh, or tack. Um, I, was, well, I probably could have jived, but I was just too chicken. It, it was powering up hard. So there's an inlet up here about five miles. The sun's just about setting. Hopefully we'll make it there before it gets too dark. I'm just gonna go in the in inlet and drop the anchor and uh, I wasn't gonna pull it up on the beach, but I think I'll go in the inlet because it looks like the swell is kind of picking up a little bit out here. Probably hard to see on the camera though. Seriously contemplating the uh, the rest of this trip now. If like the day was supposed to be super calm and it ended up this dicey, and the wind, the, I mean the waves are really are only one to two feet, but this boat just uh, it's so light and fast, and I I just don't have don't they have the skills yet to handle it single-handed? I don't think. Maybe make it to Marco Island. There's a ferry that could take me to the Keys. I want to get to the Keys to look at a War M24 down there that I think I might buy. We'll see. See how tomorrow looks. So I still got a mile to go. I'm really bummed that I'm sailing after dark. I forgot about daylight savings time was the other day. So yeah, the sun set an hour earlier. So frustrated. 
I'm gonna have to do it in complete, completely dark because I've got, of course, my headlight and stuff, but this is really a challenge. My anchor is buried under a bunch of stuff in the hole. The jib can't be lowered uh, easily at all with a stupid zipper setup it has. This is really gonna be a challenge. There's a lot of swell out here. Hopefully once I go into the inlet, the swell calms down and maybe the wind will even be blocked, but I think I'm gonna drift into the mangroves most likely. Hopefully there's no breakers. Here to look at our track today. I don't know why I decided to go three miles offshore. I guess it was just kind of the wind was working out that way. And then I finally got a little bit intense. Oh, and then going through this, this channel the waves started breaking because they got shallow on each side. There's like a jetty. Okay, we survived. That was one of the sketchiest uh, approaches ever. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, that, that's where the inlet was. I just got the anchor down in time that we didn't end up in the mangroves. We're just we're like right outside the navigation markers over there. And there's this weird thing over there. I don't know what that is. Everything is soaking wet. We almost got like knocked over. There were so many waves coming in the inlet. They were breaking over the back and side of the boat. And then I got in and I just had the jib out so I couldn't really go much upwind. So I just like picked a spot and ran forward and found the anchor and, and dropped it. Luckily, like the waves calmed down after I got through the inlet. So it's a little bit windy and rolly here, but there's the waves are, are not not too big. So I think I'll be able to sleep, but man, everything is just soaking wet. The uh, cushion that I had almost dried out just got completely drenched again, and it's dark, so that's not gonna dry out now. We got a sleeping bag, hopefully that's dry. Uh, yeah, we'll just, let's wait till morning. I'm, I'm, I'm bummed about this. This, this should have been the easiest one, and it was, it was a hard coming, it was hard coming in. I just gotta do stuff during the daylight. Yeah, I gotta really give myself plenty of time next time. Okay, so it's 7.30. It's dark out, my sweeping bag's all wet on the bottom. I'm gonna try to go to sleep. Uh, this anchorage got really rolly, that's like a really jerky, the mass is flapping all over the place. But I'm kind of pinned back here with the wind and the current right now. And I can't see where I would go in anyway. <laughs> Just gotta laugh at this. At least there's no bugs, that's good. I'm not even gonna bother getting my pillow out because it's just gonna get wet. Maybe we'll be able to keep it dry. We'll save that for a day, a day where I deserve a pillow. Maybe tomorrow. I think it looks like I can go through uh, an in inland uh, route on the way tomorrow to Marco Island and 10,000 Islands. So I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do that for a change. That'll be really nice. This boat is really nice sailing, isn't it? I think, I think the sleeping bag and stuff will all dry out when the sun comes out tomorrow. It's not supposed to rain. So the waves at the other anchorage got really big and they started coming up over the boat and through the trampoline. And my sleeping bag got soaked on both sides. Uh, so I pulled the anchor up and we're actually, this is really cool, a little cove in here. It looks like maybe like a boat resort, a resort, because there's like boat parking there or something. But uh, this is really the only option I had because I can only go downwind at the moment unless I put the main, I just can't see anything up there to tack. Upwind. I still don't really think I'm gonna get much sleep, uh, I, but I think I will put my a third pair of dry clothes on. I'm going through like half of my clothes already. Um, I don't think that sleeping bag's gonna dry tonight, but at least it's like calm, and quiet. I don't have to hear the waves. It's really nice vibes in here, but enough wind to keep the bugs away. I came up with a pretty good strategy. I'm using my tent as a sleeping bag and my sleeping bag as a tent. It's starting to starting to dry a little bit. Okay, it is day number two of our sailing catamaran adventure. We are anchored out here in this little cove. It looks like maybe a resort or something. I slept actually pretty good considering uh, the circumstances. Um, I had my, I was using my sleeping bag as a tent, like over the boom. And that actually kind of helped it dry out. And in the middle of the night when I got cold, I was, I was able to use it again as a sleeping bag. But um, the, the, I did wake up because the sheriff's department boat came by and asked what I was doing. And, and I complained about my anchor light not being bright enough or something. Uh, but then they, they, they left me alone and I went back to sleep. I also badly need to charge my phone. So, uh, see if the charging port's working. 
If not, I will use this guy to charge my spare battery and then I can use the wireless charging on that, but you lose a lot of efficiency that way. Although this thing's got a lot of watt hours. Um, so that should be okay. This thing spilled in my bag. I'm so frustrated. I gotta clean this up actually. It's, uh, what's that called? Like one of those powder meal things. Oh, it's got all, everything. Yeah, I need to clean that up. This is gonna drive me crazy when it gets mushy and wet. The uh, hatches are working pretty good, although there's narrow openings, especially with these little tabs sticking out, are, are hard to get stuff out, like the bags they catch on these. So that's super annoying, but I just need to pack stuff in smaller bags, really. Like I have this backpack, it's a waterproof, and I was gonna use that, but it's got like netting and it, you can't get it in and out of the bag. So that's kind of frustrating. I'm gonna have to kind of take stuff out of the backpack, I think, to use it. We're sailing this morning, going, to get a bit, going against a bit of current, had to do a lot of rowing and jumping off and pushing to get out of the channel. And now we're trying to tack our way out. Unsheet the jib, pull it over here. This is, this is about dry. Now we're making progress. So I think this is the, the upwind section we have to do and then it will be more downwind. Maybe, actually it might be a beam reach would be perfect. Our leeway is uh, pretty bad with this current, but you gotta love the speed this boat does. <laughs> I can't get over that. So I dropped the, uh, my little solar light, the bottom of the solar light in that dagger board slot, like down there. And so that dagger board is stuck up, unfortunately, which I could kind of use the dagger boards now. Uh, I think if I pull the dagger board out, it'll fall through. I forgot to attach my top batten up there. So I've got a limp, a limp sail head. Kind of sad looking. I don't really feel like lowering the whole main sail though. Well, lowering it's easy, raising it's kind of annoying. Maybe if I take a break. It's kind of nice having an overcast day. because It's been so sunny lately, nice and cool. It's interesting, just a few miles uh, south of Fort Myers in Naples, there doesn't seem to be any, hardly any hurricane debris. There's a dolphin behind me. So this rudder is already starting to fall apart. Some delamination on the bottom. And I just have horrible luck with these uh, catamarans and rudders. I'm glad I have a spare, but I think this one will still work better than the spare for now. I don't think it actually it should cause too much of a problem. It's kind of swelling up, so it makes it a little harder to, to, to kick down. But uh, we'll continue on with this until it breaks. And then uh, I think I could probably, I could probably fix that up with maybe put some more fiberglass over it when I get back to Gramses or wherever I get to. Who knows where that will be. <clears throat> I've got some epoxy actually on the boat. I could probably peel that off and recoat it. I was gonna bring a little square of glass too. Forgot that though. I got a pretty thorough tool kit on board.
<laughs> Dive of dolphins are right next to me. The wind is dying now, so I think I will beach it here and the ocean's on the other side. Maybe we can go for a, a swim and, you know, we don't want to wear ourselves out just trying to, just baking hardly any miles. So maybe we go for a walk, I'll pull the anchor out, I think this will be a good idea. The wind's supposed to uh, pick up. Maybe around in the afternoon, maybe two or between two and four, so we can get a few more miles in, maybe. But I want to I want to be anchored before dark today. That is the goal. No, this night sailing, no night sailing. The beach catamaran, maybe a little bit night sailing. We'll see. If it's like inland, I guess I could do it. But it's so hard to get all your stuff sorted and once the sun goes down, so I'm right up on the beach. We're beached. That's all you gotta do. I forgot my uh, sail cover at home, but then I found this nice. It's like a, some blinds, but it's really big. I think it'd be the perfect quick uh, size for my sail cover. Just to cover it up when I'm not using it so it doesn't get sun damage. Lots of good seashells here. This is amazing. It's a whole beach all to myself. I just walked a, a whole mile and I didn't see anyone. I'm so lucky. There's only buildings way down there. This is a great spot. We are back on the move again. The wind switched directions. It's coming from, um, it's blowing onshore now. And uh, had a nice little walk on the beach. And we're sailing towards uh, Marco Island, or this might be Marco Island to the right of us. I'm not sure. Sailing happy. Probably feed in a bit. I think we've got about maybe 14 more miles to go today. some real good speed now. This is what things, this thing's meant for. Nice flat water, about eight knots of wind, blasting along. Go to the choppy section here, not exposed to open water. Going fast though. And now we gotta turn down wind. This cushion was nearly dry and then a big, big power boat just like blasted by. And now everything on the boat is soaked, including that. Uh, it might, we might have enough time for it to dry out again. 
I guess this was a bad idea to bring this kind of cushion, but it's just so much more comfortable than an inflatable. I guess I should have bought like a foam one that like doesn't absorb water. That would have been the thing to do next time. So it looks like we've got one more little town up here and then we'll be in the, in the Everglades and it probably won't have any cell signal. So I'm downloading my weather, kind of starting to think about planning a route. I might actually kind of swim ashore and get some, if there's a restaurant open, maybe get some uh, one last dinner. Because I'd probably be at least two days in the Everglades and then another two days in the Keys before I get to uh, civilization. Well, at least I have to plan on that. I figure out plenty of water and food though. It's exciting, a real adventure. Out in the wilderness, no more of this gallivant about in Europe. So, I've been looking at the weather and everything. I think it's going to be a change of plans. The winds look like they're they're going to pick up. Um, the models seem to be agreeing. I think it's definitely going to happen. It's like going to be low coming through. And it's going to get up to 20 knots, probably gusting higher. So I'm going to, that's not for like two days. So I think I, what I'll do is I'll sail into the Everglades tomorrow, boat around and turn around and start working my way back towards uh, Fort Myers Beach because uh, I don't want to get, get stuck out in high winds in this thing. And then that way I can, I can anchor out in the, the back bay if I need to. Uh, and wait out the winds and I think we won't make it to the Keys in this boat but I'll find another way to get uh, get down to the Keys some way or another. So I just dropped the sail there's a restaurant in here that I can park the boat at so we're gonna go get some food and uh, look at the plans. Just pulled up to the dock da -da -da -da. I opted for the inside table for lunch. Soft shell crab sandwich and beer. So we got ourselves a good meal at this restaurant. Now off into the Everglades, find ourselves a little campsite. So we are headed out that little pass and then we'll go into open water for just the know, half a mile and then there's some some little islands with beaches and I'd like to I'd like to anchor either pull a boat on one or anchor right next to one. It just kind of makes getting ready easier when we got a beach, you know, to pull the jib up and down and lay the stuff out. And... Uh, other, on other news, this cushion. Man, it just got one wave wiped over that boat when that boat went waked us, and this thing is so wet. This thing was a lousy idea to bring. Uh, if it's if that little bit of water makes the thing just take all day to dry, so I don't know if I'm gonna sleep on this. I might put the tarp over it and then sleep on top of it. I mean, the trampoline isn't too bad. It's just got I don't know, a bunch of ropes and stuff on it, and like the barber hauler system's going through the tube there.
zooming. So we're coming up here. Dang, you can see better on the camera than on my eyes. There's a little sandbar up here. We'll just anchor right on that. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's too perfect. Oh my gosh. Just into the sunset. Parked it right up. Get up in there. Right up onto the beach. Land ho. Oh, man. Some bioluminescence would make this. <laughs> That's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> You're jumping. Yeah. Anchor is secure. Sail down. Both sails down. Yeah. Let's see if it does it over here. Oh, there's no fish on this side. But the trampoline's cleared out. This this little forward trampoline ended up being an awesome idea just to store my bin and stuff while I'm not sailing. Really good setup. I think I will go ahead and fiberglass a ring on those hatches so they're more more secure and watertight and the boat is extra rigid although it seems to be sailing fine the way it is. This little swim platform is pretty nice but I would like to make it a little more secure so I can stand on that forward stuff. It didn't seem to be too much of a hazard even surfing down waves coming into a scary inlet. I, was, I thought it didn't seem to scoop up any water or nothing. I put a garbage bag in this hatch here so then I can just throw my garbage away. Pretty convenient. And now I don't have to look at it. But then I make sure I keep them loose because they get stuck. All right, much better night tonight. Everything's all dry. Nice cool breeze. I don't even need my sleeping bag. Oh, it's gonna be good. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. All right, day number three. Slept super good. My bug net worked really good. The bugs didn't bother me at all. And the sun's coming up. I got a little, little bit of breeze, very light. But we'll just, we'll just do a little cruise to the Everglades for some of these islands and then I make my decision if I'm gonna keep going to the Keys or head back to Fort Myers. Sails are up, we're cruising. Looks like another day in paradise. Let's go deep into the Everglades. See if we can see some gators, some birds, some fish. Some manatee, some dolphins. It's a great day to be on the water. So we're gonna head up to this. Uh Probably a good chance for seeing our gators and stuff deep in there.
Don't see any yet. The wind's great for getting in here today. Just about eight knots of wind. It's kind of gusty as it wraps around these mangroves and stuff, but our mast is 30 feet tall, so we can, we're higher than the mangroves. That's nice, we always, we always catch some of that wind up high. Looks like it's deep enough. The batteries haven't kicked up yet. So here's the little cut we're trying to get through and then this nice, this narrow kind of pass through there. That'd be kind of fun to try to get into there. Well, the wind turned against us and it's blowing us out sideways. <laughs> we're going sideways. So, hmm, I can see the wind right there. Maybe we'll have to find another way in. Moving. You just gotta tell the tell the uh, water guys you mean business by getting the paddle out, and then it'll give you a little bit of wind as a reward. Sometimes. Oh man, we're almost in. That's such a cool spot. I need to paddle a little more. Better paddle. Oh, we're going backwards. Oh, now we're going forwards. I think we found the wind. Yeah, we're moving. Look at that. Ooh, I wanted to sail in here, but it looks like our mast might bump the trees. Make it. It all depends on what's behind this bend. We're gonna go for it. Oh, this is so cool. Who would have imagined sailing a beach catamaran through the Everglades? I did it a couple years ago. Uh, with the big sailboat, but we had a motor, and then I had a motor, little motorboat that was pretty fun. This is completely silent, nothing but the wind and my paddle. Really get up close to the birds this way. Birds and gators.
Centerboard and rudder just popped up. We're getting sent into some shallow stuff here. Not sure if you can see on the camera. It's only a couple inches there. This is the bay I want to get into. We're almost there. Rudder's back down. And then we're back in our bay. Oh, come on, there's a little breeze up there. Oh, we're almost there. Made it through. Now this supposed to be super shallow. I say we try we try and do another cut up there to get to get back out. But let's go let's go deeper first. I just found a spot on the chart called Gator Bay. I think that's calling us. Rudder tips are dragging. Pull the center boards up. We'll try to get in that way. I might need to pop the rudders manually. Yeah, they're stuck in the mud. So you just. Okay, that's working. Maybe we can use a little bit of center board, maybe. Okay, got a little, little bit of center board now. A little bit of rudder, a little bit of centerboard. I think we're gonna get in there. We can get in the wind. There's a skater bay up here. Here it comes. It's super hard to steer with the rudders like this, but for you guys, I do it. No, I do it for myself actually. You're just along for the ride. So that's all we get of Gator Bay. Uh, I got completely stuck in the mud, even with the rudders and centerboards up. Uh, and I had to kind of push the boat off, but now we're back in deeper water. By deeper, I mean like eight inches of water. And I think we'll try this one last outlet over here. If that doesn't work, we'll go back the same same way we came in. Didn't see any gators. They're sneaky though, they can't blend in. Keep my eyes out. I must have gone down because on my way in here I didn't have any trouble with the rudders uh, but now that I'm heading back out they're kicking up like every every hundred feet or so it's super annoying uh, and the wind has switched so it was against us both ways <laughs> it's kind of frustrating but we're almost out and then we'll be able to actually once we get out the wind should be in our favor once we get out of these uh, little estuaries before I start the long trip back I'm gonna anchor up on this beach Let's go for a little swim. See, the brilliance of this bungee anchor is it's actually way longer than this one. It stretches out, so you have plenty of scope for pretty much anywhere in Florida. And then if you want the boat to come up at at high tide and stay up on the beach, you just stretch out the bungee and the bungee will pull it up. If you want to let it slide out, you just need the bungee slacker. Super useful. Or if you want to pull it out, you can just, yeah, bungee the anchor out uh, at high tide and then you come back and the boat will be, you know, out in the water.
just cleared uh, Marco Island, and I think I'm going to go offshore. I'm going to go offshore now. Winds are just super light, and it looks like the water is relatively flat. Hope they can make it far enough to the next inlet before the wind gets strong. Um, now I'll just pull it real high up on the beach if it's too much. Something to plan. I think I'm gonna skip this inlet and I'm gonna go to the, uh, the bridge and I'll anchor just, I mean the, not bridge, the pier. I'll anchor there and then I can go grab some, uh, some dinner. And by the time I get back to the boat, hopefully the wind is waves completely calm down. It'll be a nice night on the water. So I was going to anchor off the beach once the wind died, but the wind didn't die. And we're, it actually is holding on perfectly. And we're, we're, it's like five knots of wind and we're doing five to six knots of boat speed. And it's calm and found a comfortable position. So I figured I'd just keep going. Let's we'll see how far we get. The winds look pretty light tomorrow. So I figured I ought to make as much ground as I can. Um, so if the wind dies, I'll stop. Or if I just get too exhausted, then I'll try to find a good place to stop. But otherwise, we'll just gonna keep on going. I just parked the boat on the beach and I'm gonna go walk around and see if I can find something to eat. I think there might be a McDonald's in like a mile or two. Had a pretty good night anchored off the beach here. Pretty, pretty calm, a little damp, a lot of condensation on stuff, but uh, whatever. I think we've got about 15 miles to get back. And I think we can do it. Wind's gonna get real strong in a couple of days, or actually maybe this evening. So we wanna get, we wanna get back before the wind gets strong because this thing is a handful in that strong wind. We're underway again. This boat has so much to do setup wise. It takes like 30 minutes to get everything uh, all ready to go. And I even had the jib all left up. I didn't even have to put that up. But I guess also I have to pack up all my, my sleeping stuff. That always takes a while. But we're going pretty good. We're doing about five knots this morning. Five knots. This, this boat goes the wind speed or faster even. It's awesome. So we should make it back to Fort Myers in maybe three or four hours. So far the wind's been way better than forecast said today. Uh, I sailed a few miles. I'm gonna pull up on this beach and go for a little swim. It's getting kind of warm. Sun's getting up there. Just saw a giant skate jump out of the water. That was kind of cool. I put these mats from my leftover from my surfboard and they're kind of nice. I just wish they're a little bit thicker for sitting on, but they're nice for kneeling and standing. That's a grip. Bonita Springs is here, and then Fort Myers is right over there. This is a nice beach we got out of ourselves.
So we're back at the dock now. Not quite a successful trip, but uh, still pretty good. Got to see some cool spots in the Everglades and really get to know this boat, at least in the lighter winds and a little bit of the medium and stronger winds. Uh, I've got a lot to learn. You know, if every trip was, you know, completely successful, then or guaranteed, to, if every trip was guaranteed, then it wouldn't really be an adventure, would it? Uh, but thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.